Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I like. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Limitless. And this episode uh, kind of picks up a little bit after, I think it's been like a week after uh, the whole Brian's Russian adventure. What ha apparently happened is that he's come back and he's been put under new, you know, there's new rules put in play by Naz. There's at least 10 of them. Uh, some, I'm going to list some of them. One of my personal favorites being like he actually has a curfew now. Uh, it's like 10 p.m. He's got, you know, more uh, scrutiny about, you know, the pill situation. Like every time he takes a pill to make sure he's not hoarding them, Naz has Mike and Ike, you know, check and make sure he actually swallowed the pill. Uh, he has to actually work in a cubicle. He doesn't have his little room anymore. And um, uh, just so Naz can actually visually keep an eye on him. So he's in a cubicle now. And she's making him wear like a suit. And he lost his um, headquarters, the one he got, you know, back when he made, uh, when he did, it was his reward for doing, you know, getting rid of the top, capturing the top 10 people on the FBI's most wanted list. But in this episode, they end up investigating a uh, billionaire's death. And what was very interesting is this billionaire was killed and he also had his kidney cut out of him. Basically, it led to this uh, scientist slash doctor who basically was trying to save his life. Uh, they're currently working on a 3D printed kidney, and that, that's what believed to be what was cut out of him. So, you know, someone was obviously stealing it to sell it. But the twist is you end up finding out that it wasn't actually a 3D printed kidney. It was actually someone like it was a kid. It was a live kidney. It was a real kidney that uh, some uh, some kid, I forgot his name, he was paid to give his kidney. And so it was, it was like the, the billionaire had a black mar market kidney inside of him, not a 3D printed one. Because the doctor slash scientist, I don't really, I really wasn't sure what his position really was. Because, you know, I, I'm going to assume he was a doctor. Basically, he implanted the uh, real kidney in him until they got the 3D printed one 100% okay. And then they were going to secretly, you know, replace him by telling him it's like, oh, it's a more upgraded version of the 3D kidney that's inside of you. Uh, it turns out it wasn't him. Um, they needed to track down the guy who actually, you know, killed the billionaire. But to do that, you know, it actually had to be someone who, you know, was very skilled at medical work. Someone that was going to do medical work, particularly a veterinary, like, you know, ended up being, you know, it had to be someone that was going to do. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like off the books medical stuff you know one of those doctors is like oh you come to they'll patch you up no questions asked you just have to pay them under the table uh in this moment we had the brian touchables uh reunited once again and basically brian was like we need someone to take a bullet in the leg you know this way we can you know go around town asking s certain people to look into it like look into the wounds and find our like our killer this is their way of tracking down their killer and Rebecca kept bringing up like you can't actually do that because he suggested the um the tech guy the one with glasses he's like yeah you're gonna have to take a bullet don't worry about it it's gonna be through and through he's like why do I get shot he's like come on dude literally out of everyone here you're the only one that sits down for your job everyone else kind of has to like stand up and basically the janitor suggests himself he's like I can't feel anything on my leg anyway and they're still tossing it back and forth Rebecca's like you can't do it basically dude pulls out like um I don't know what kind of uh, knife that is, but he pulls it out, stabs himself in the leg, uh, and just, I, I just love it, he's screaming out in pain, and then Brian's screaming just because of what he's seeing, ends up pulling, you know, ends up, you know, whole situation works out, because they were able to track down the guy, and end up finding out, you know, he was paid by the billionaire's wife, she had essentially wanted to kill her husband, I, money, it was basically, basically for money, she was going to sell the 3D printed kidney, but it turned out, turned out to be a real kidney, so to get rid of the evidence, she ended up feeding the kidney to, um, her dog, which is kind of twisted in the end, but, yeah, the, a big part of this episode is Rebecca, Mike, and Ike investigating Brian, like, they end up, you know, trying to figure out what this whole Brian's 
Brian slash Sand situation is all about. It turns out one of the um, new people in um, Brian's life, one of the two people Nas hired to look after him, he nicknamed one be Mr. X and Mr. Y. One being Mr. X just because he met him first. So the second guy is Mr. Y. Apparently Mr. Y works for Sands. I don't, whether that's Sands or Mora, you know, that's another question later on. Uh, basically, you know, obviously, but they, those two were looking into it. They've been following Brian around, but Mike and I were following Brian around, but it's like with his new security, his new situation, he's not, he can't, even if they, if he does, even if he does anything, he can't do anything right now because, you know, he's under so much scrutiny. But, um, there was a situation where he basically got in contact with Piper because Piper wanted to meet, uh, cause she, had, uh, I guess had finished the enzyme that she was working on. So apparently she was back in the U S and basically Brian ended up coming up with different situations. Like he was, he ran different plays in his head about how he was going to make, you know, knock Mr. Y out. One of them was a dart. The second one, what was it? Some kind of gas, I think. And the third one is what he went with. And that was like messing with food. He ordered a pizza, sprinkled some stuff on it and made him go to sleep. That combined with some Enya ended up making him fall asleep. He ended up meeting up, tried to go meet Piper. Piper didn't show up, but he didn't notice that he was being followed. The people that followed him weren't, you know, related to more or sins. They ended up being um, Mike and Ike. Um, turns out, uh, you know, he comes back to, you know, his apartment and ends up, you know, finding Mr. Y is gone. And he finds the bracelet that Piper was wearing, he finds it there covered in blood. So base essentially he goes and meets with Mora directly. And you know, Mora I mentioned to him, he had no idea Piper was still alive. It was something Sans had kept to himself. Apparently, Sans is going off on his own, doing its own thing. Now that he has Piper, that means he has an enzyme, meaning he can take unlimited amounts of NZT as he wants to too because it looks like apparently he's built his own team because it's like he's not working with Mora anymore. Um, Mora himself isn't kind of like worried about this whole situation. He's just kind of like, yeah, don't worry. He's like, I'm seeing way beyond even becoming president. Like things are like, you know, it's very interesting because even Brian doesn't look that far ahead, but it's like how, like What's up with his NZT dosage? You know, Mora is like thinking on an even completely different level than Brian. Maybe it's because he's been on NZT longer. He's been on it for years, so it's like maybe that's what that is. I don't, I don't know, because he's so, but he's so calm about the situation. Even Brian's like, I don't understand why he's so calm about this. But we have Rebecca, you know, obviously Brian didn't notice this, but Rebecca saw him meet up with Mora and leave um, like that, leave his meet up with Mora. And, you know, obviously she goes to Brian's house the next day um, and ends up, you know, having her gun out in her cuffs. And he's like, and she goes, I saw you with Mora. So these cuffs are for you. And you're going to tell me the truth about everything. So it's like. Okay, like, is he going to tell her 100% of the truth, or is he just going to, um, like, kind of BS his way out of this whole situation? To me, personally, you know, it would be very interesting, because Sands has Rebecca's house bugged, because remember, that is still a thing, maybe he found out about the fact is that she's looking into Brian, so that made him decide that he's going, maybe he already had all this planned, and just her investigating Brian that made him decide that he's going to escalate his plans a little uh, faster. You know, it'd be really interesting is if Piper wasn't actually a good guy this entire time. What if this entire time she's been working with Sands? Not Mora, but Sands himself. And this whole situation was him, you know, biding his time until she, you know, he manipulate, you know, had her manipulate Brian to help her make this enzyme so that not just her and Brian could get away from more, but so that Sans could get away from more and do his own thing. So it makes you wonder though, if Sans is off doing his own thing, maybe a lot of the bad stuff that's been associated to more specifically, all the people connected to NZT dying, like Rebecca's dad, for example, maybe that was just Sans, or maybe it really is more. It, you, it's really not a hundred percent clear whether he's a good guy or a bad guy. It, Cause it, he plays both sides so damn well. 
it's kind of like, okay, what what are you doing? What is what is your true ambitions? I and mean, obviously, he he wants to change the world. That's obviously one. But it's like, I don't know. I think that'd be pretty awesome if Piper was a bad guy. I want that to be the case that she was playing Brian the entire time. She was working with Sans the entire time. That Sans didn't capture her. She just came, you know, back home to Sans. I don't know. And what what is Sans' plan too? Now that you know he has NZT, possibly has the enzyme, and he's putting his own team together. What what does that mean for Brian? And what does that mean for Mora? And the whole like I said, the whole Rebecca and Brian situation. Because Boyles has been bought in on this stuff too. It's not just Mike and Ike who knows about it. Naz is still in the dark about it. But Boyles uh, tell Rebecca about it because he ended up confessing to. Rebecca that he took that um, NZT pill not that he took it took it but he had it on him because you know he this, he picked it up after that whole Casey situation uh, many episodes back but basically he wanted he was thinking about you know giving it to his mom so that his mom had like you know one amazing day you know but it just he just didn't know what to do about it like he was lying to Rebecca this entire time and Rebecca finally bought him in on it which it's like how's this whole situation going to turn about because Boyle's a bit of a stick stickler that's why I'm surprised he never went to Naz behind Rebecca's back but I guess it's because you know he trusts Rebecca so you know they can't really act upon this she doesn't want to at least she doesn't want to act upon all this like uh, uh sand situation slash more situation she didn't want to act upon it until she got all the facts straight because like i said she cares about brian and she doesn't want to like put brian like you know throw brian under the bus needlessly you know so i really want to see where everything goes that's really all i want to talk about this episode to the next time we meet be happy be safe live life to the fullest and enjoy it good day and goodbye